Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test Tube Plus again today for episode two of five in our series on health and fitness. You may have noticed that I have a friend here in studio with me, my friend Amy Shearer Title. Hi, Amy. Hi, Trace. What's up? Not too much. How are you doing? <laughs> doing all right. Just doing a podcast. So today we're talking a little bit about the benefits and dangers of going too hard, but make sure you watch yesterday's episode about how to get off the couch in the first place, which I think Amy would agree. That's the hard part. Definitely. Yeah, it's definitely difficult. So... Amy, why don't you tell everybody why I brought you here today? You brought me here today because back in a formal former life, I was a certified personal trainer, mm-hmm. and I spent all of my days and evenings putting heavy objects on people and making them do things like push-ups and lunges and running around, and it was it was a lot of fun, and yeah. I learned a lot about how to you know change bodies. Cool. Yeah. So we figured she would be an expert in health and fitness. Well, I know some stuff. You know some stuff. <laughs> Minor expert. So when it comes to working out. Part of that is working on different muscle groups, right? So when you do that, you end up hurting yourself a lot because you get sore. I'm not talking about literally hurting yourself. I mean, like when I go running for the first time, my muscles hurt. Right. Why do they hurt, Amy? That is actually not something that anybody has a very good answer for. And I actually, I looked this up again today to see if I was just couldn't remember what it was. So there's often you hear people talking about the lactic acid that builds up in your muscles when you're Mm -hmm. working out and that it's the release of that lactic acid from your muscles that hurts. But apparently that's not actually entirely the case because the lactic acid only takes a couple hours to get out of your body. And what you're feeling, that pain you kind of get a day after is called delayed onset muscle soreness. And it's it depends on what you've worked out how hard you've worked it out how much you've done a specific exercise or worked out a muscle group and it's the kind of thing that as a trainer and now just as somebody that works out i really like it actually Mm -hmm. because it's the best indication of what you've been doing and whether you've been doing something right and when you stop feeling that pain that means your muscles have actually adapted to that motion so if you're doing a lot of squats and you're sort of feeling it in the right place like in your glutes and sort of the backs of your legs a little bit um and you stop feeling that that means that you've kind of hit a point where you're not going to be building much new, more new muscle doing that movement. And you want to either vary it up, you want to change the tempo, the pacing, the weight, um, or just try a completely different move to hit the same muscle groups all together. Because every time you hit the muscle from a different way, you're, you're doing it differently. And you're going to get that new soreness after a workout. Hmm. So no one, no one's entirely sure what it is, but I really like it. Don't you just feel accomplished when you wake up in the morning? You're like, ow, everything hurts. <laughs> I did good. That doesn't sound like something <laughs> that I like to accomplish, but it's good pain. So it's the good pain. Soreness aside, how is it that muscles are being built as I'm working out? So muscles are actually built after you work out, not oh. while you're working out. So when you're working out and you're lifting something heavier than your body weight, you're lifting a weight, you're actually breaking apart the muscle fibers, and the muscle gets bigger when the tears in those muscle fibers repair. Oh, so, so I'm breaking down my muscle and then building it up yes. again? Yeah, every time you work out, you're actually just destroying the muscle you're trying to build, but then it builds. Huh. So it like heals itself, and in doing so makes it stronger? Yes. Cool. And this also happens with other things like when you're using steroids that can increase muscle growth, but it doesn't end up being good for everything. No, I mean, steroids are basically synthetic testosterone. And testosterone is something that both men and women use in rebuilding their muscles after they break them down in a workout. So it does help build bigger, stronger muscles faster. However, there's a lot of reasons why you don't necessarily want to use I mean, extra testosterone is maybe not what you want. I mean, it's why you see a lot of female bodybuilders that have um, that look like they have some male secondary sex characteristics. Mm-hmm. They have deeper voices. They sort of have, you know, their bodies become shaped quite differently, not just because of the musculature, but because they have added male sex hormone in them. Um, and there's, I mean, there's so many. I actually looked up a list mm-hmm. of all the complications you can get from steroids today. Okay. Especially because, think about it, it's a synthetic version of testosterone, and you don't necessarily know what is in it. Mm. So if you're not getting it from a reputable source, it might actually be doing you a lot more harm than good. Some of the side effects just from taking steroid pills, the oral stuff, is insomnia, lower resistance to infection, muscle weakness, nervousness, restlessness, osteoporosis, stomach irritation or bleeding, sudden mood swings, swollen puffy face, water retention, swelling, and worsening of diabetes. That's a lot of stuff. Yeah. That's just the oral ones? Yep. Is there other ones? There's more if you are injecting steroids. That Think about it. You're injecting with a needle all the time. You could get infection, allergic reactions, bleeding into your joint, rupturing tendons. Yuck. Yeah. No, thank you. No. <laughs> Not okay. 
Cool. So we went and looked up some stuff about FDA approval of these supplements, dietary supplements, and other things that people use when they're working out. So it turns out that since October of 1994, the Dietary Supplement Health and Education Act, or DSHA, was signed into law by President Clinton. And before that, the FDA did have oversight on dietary supplements. But afterward, the supplements no longer needed approval by the FDA before they were marketed, unless they carry an ingredient that's never been used before. Did you know that? I, I did know not that. know that. Isn't that, that is cool? kind of interesting and a little bit creepy. It is creepy, yeah. right? And it says in the law that the firms, as they're known, the people who are making these supplements, must determine if their own supplements are safe. That's super sketched How? Down. Yeah, that is an excellent <laughs> What are question. the guidelines? They don't actually have those listed uh, in, like, anything that we could find without digging too deeply. Uh, but the Federal Trade Commission does say that any uh, claims about the efficacy of a dietary supplement needed to be backed up by, quote, competent and reliable scientific evidence. Could they please define competent and reliable? No, nope, I don't <laughs> think they can. Yeah. So dietary supplements are something else that appear when people start going really hard. Yeah, there's a, I mean, and there's a lot of them, and I've, I mean, almost everyone I've known in that industry takes them, and it's amazing at gyms, there's always like, check in, here's the diet and supplement room. Um, the most common, I think, is probably fat burners, which I'm not even sure what they do, how they work, but they're supposed to melt your fat and turn them into energy. I mean, doesn't that sound like a dream? But It does sound like a dream. It's, it's all these things that you're, they're usually, or they're, at least they're marketed as Things that your body produces naturally, they're just concentrating that thing so that you can get it without having to eat the calories to get it from food, right. which is a little bit creepy as well. But um, the most common is probably protein supplement, but mm -hmm. that is probably the most normal. Yeah. There have been studies yeah. in the past, and it, pardon me, I'm sorry, I don't have it in front of me, but basically the idea is we're talking about food science. You know, you're breaking down food into its component parts and taking the parts that you want and leaving out the parts that you don't want. But that doesn't always work because there's some science that says the protein, whatever it is, the you know supplement that you're taking, whatever that might be, there's something in the natural environment of that thing that makes it behave differently in your body than if you just took it as an individual piece. And the, the research is out on that, and they're constantly revising whether or not you need to eat you know, vitamin C in an orange, or if you can just take vitamin C and get 100% of the same effect. They don't entirely know, but there are some things that they figured it out with, and a lot of things they still haven't. So pretty interesting. The thing that they have figured out is the best way, if you are going really hard, is to make sure that you're staying hydrated. That yes. is extremely important and yeah. something that people also forget about. So if we're talking about supplements, I think the only thing that probably actually works is the sports drinks that will help replenish your electrolytes mm -hmm. because you are going to be sweating and your body is going to need that stuff to just recover at all. And that's you know, that's sort of where, for most people, it's probably good to just stop it there. Right, yeah. It's, the, thing a bit, the thing about it is electrolytes are like ions used by your body, so it's like salts and things, and those need to be replenished. And if you drink too much of just pure water, you're going to put yourself out of balance. And if you drink too much of this stuff like fizzy drinks and too many sugary drinks, you're actually also going to put yourself out of balance. So it's, it's tough, to, tough to do, but you can go too hard and it's pretty, it can be pretty dangerous. But let's talk a little bit tomorrow about the social science of the benefits of staying fit because these people keep coming back to the gym day in and day out. So there's obviously some social benefit, right? Right. Come back tomorrow for more Test 2 Plus. We're going to cover those topics and more stuff. Make sure you subscribe. Go find Amy on Twitter at AST Vintage Space. You can find me at Trace Dominguez, and we'll see you tomorrow on Test 2 Plus.